Now we're going to create uh, a method in our program to bind the authors table uh, to our database. Alright, so let's go to the source of this uh, application by clicking on the source button. Right, I'm going to create a private uh, function which doesn't return anything so we set it as void and we'll call this uh, this fun uh, this method bind authors table all right so now we have our method so whenever we need to uh, bind the authors table uh, with data from the database we will run this uh, this method now when you're binding an element to uh, a data uh, to a data source not just a database to any data source there's a couple of things you need to remember the first thing you need is to run a query against the data source or against the database to bring back whichever information you want to be displayed onto the table that's the first thing the second thing is a table has a model now the model of the table is an object that determines what exactly will be displayed in that table so firstly you need to run a query against your data source bring back the data you want and the next thing you need to do is to add that data to the tables model and thirdly you bind the table to its model so the first thing we're going to do is to bring the data that we require so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an entity manager factory we've seen how to do this in the in the previous tutorial create entity manager factory and for that we're going to use uh, the name of uh, this persistence unit which is school library advanced pu let's close that all right then we're going to get a jpa controller for authors so it's authors jpa controller you just need to type in the uh, the first letter of each word and then press control space and netbeans does the rest for you we'll call this one controller is equal to new here we don't even need to type in the first three three letters it's just the first letter and netbeans will pick up from the the type that we put in uh, earlier exactly what type should uh, should uh, apply here new authors jpa controller and we pass it the entity manager factory that we just created and we got now the next thing is to bring back all the authors and all the information about these authors that is in our table and we're going to take that and we're going to store it into a list because the return type of uh, uh, the results that are coming is going to be a list so we're going to create a list of type authors and we'll call it authors list is equal to controller dot find authors entities now this this function which is a function in this method which is a method of the authors jpa controller will simply bring back everything from the authors table there we go so now we've got a list of authors we're getting a little error here now the error here is because we haven't imported the uh, the list class so what you all you need to do is click on the uh, on the error on the word list and press alternate enter and netbeans will give you the hint add java.util.list it's not java.awt.list it's java.util.list hit enter and that um, import is sorted out for you by uh, NetBeans now if you look at this I've made a bit of a mistake here I've spelled the word authors wrong so it's nothing serious we just go and uh, correct that so now we've got a list of all the authors and all the information in that uh, in that table the next thing we need to do is to create a table model and we're gonna bind that model to the table all right so the first thing we need to do is to create a model so we'll create a default table model we'll call it model is equal to new default table model all right 
and now we are going to populate this uh, this model with information that's going to be displayed in the table right the first thing we need to do is to set the column identifiers that is the header of each column all right so we're going to set model dot set column identifiers and what this needs is it needs uh, an array of type object so we're going to pass it an array of type object all right so we do this by creating a new array we can do this right here so it's new string array and remember when you're creating an array on the fly you use the curly braces now the curly braces will denote what is going to be in this in this array now if we think about the authors table it's got four columns id first name last name and email so we're going to create a provision uh, make provision for the four columns and the headers of each column the header of each column goes within uh, uh, double braces so the first one is id first name last name and then finally remember we're placing a comma between each one this can get a little bit tricky but you need to double and triple check your code if there's anything missing right so we've created the column identifiers these are the column headers now the next thing to do is to populate uh, the table with the actual data from the database so we know that data lives in the authors list um, uh, array list what we need to do now is to iterate through the authors list bring out the information that's that's uh, wrapped up in there and put it into our model now uh, we do that we start that firstly by creating a for loop we know that to iterate through a list we need a for loop and we'll use the f the specialized for loop for iterating through um, list. So we'll say for authors author and authors list. Now, if you're not familiar with how this type of for loop works, all right, what you need to do is the word you firstly you create a type a variable that's going to hold the current. Uh, item that we are pointing to in the list and it's going in our case is going to be uh, the variable author and it's of type authors and after the colon you put in the array list that we are going to be iterating which is the authors list array list so in other words we're going to iterate through authors list and each item in the list is going to be stored in author one at a time uh, during this uh, the duration of this loop all right that's the first thing the second thing we need to do now while we are iterating through this list is with each element with each element in the authors list we need to make a variable or rather we need to make an array of type string and then we need to add that as a row into our model so every single row in the model is a an array of type string so we'll say model dot add row so you can see it's object row but a string is an object a string the string class is a subclass of uh, type object so we'll say add row all right and now we're going to create a new string variable as we did before new string and again we put our curly braces right and what is going to be in each array the first thing is going to be the id right so we're going to say author remember this is the current iteration of author or the the authors list that get id right but now the id that's coming back is going to be of type integer so we need to convert it to a string so dot to string all right so let's look at this now let me just select this part this is going to be the first element in our array the first element in the array is going to be the id of the current author so if we've got five authors in our list it's going to take the first author in the list bring its id and put it into this array 
Right, now to go to the next element in our array, which is going to be the first name. So it's author dot get first name. Now this doesn't need the two string because it is already a string. Next thing is the author's surname. So it's author dot get surname and finally author dot get email. So there we have it. We have a new row. We are creating a new row in our model and that row is going to be populated with an array of type string and inside that array we have the elements ID, first name, surname and email. So far so good. The next thing we're going to do is to bind this model to our table. So we're going to say tbl authors dot set model model, which is the model that we created. So we created the model and now we're setting the model to the table. Let's see if this model is going to work. Okay, so now we're going to run our program to see if our table binding works. But before we go there, I want to show you something. When you look at the name of this method, you can see there's an obvious spelling error here. Now it's very easy to just go and uh, uh, hit the backspace and, uh, and rename it. But that's the wrong thing to do. Whenever you're renaming anything in your Java program, it's better to refactor it. So how do you refactor? You right click and click on uh, hover on refactor and then you go on rename all right so using the refactor box i'm going to rename my my method now the reason we do this is because there may be references to this uh, method somewhere else although this is a brand new method that we've never used but you can never be too sure so when you refactor then your IDE NetBeans will actually go and look for every single usage of that uh, that method and make the alteration there as well. So I'm going to refactor it and perfect we have it. Now let's run and see what happens. It's going to take a bit of time. Okay when I run it I find there's an error. Now I did this deliberately so when you find you having this uh, sort of error you know exactly what to do. Now this error Java X persistence that persistent exception and if you go down the line on this on this error message what it's going to tell you is there we go class org dot apache dot java darby dot jbdc dot client driver is not found. So it's not finding a class. What this simply means is that you haven't imported the necessary library to run uh, the Java JDBC driver for Derby. So that's very, very simple to fix. What you do is you go to your navigator and you look at uh, under your project, there's a folder called libraries. When you open it, you click on it, you'll find there are certain uh, libraries in there already. Eclipse link, Java X persistence, Eclipse etc. What we need is the Java DB libraries. So you right click it and you click on add library and it shows all the libraries that are available and this is the one we need the Java DB driver. Click on that, click on add library and instantly NetBeans adds three libraries to your libraries folder the Java DB, the Java, Java uh, Derby client and the uh, Derby net or uh, Java. Now that we've got our libraries, let's cancel this uh, run and start again. When we run the app, we find that the information from the database is now displayed in our J table and that shows us that the binding has been successful.